Okay, welcome to part two of this video in which we are looking at evenness and oddness of discrete time signals. In part one of the video, we looked at the delta function and we looked at the unit step function. In this part of the video, hopefully we'll be able to uh, look at the rest of these functions. Um, we should have enough time to do that. So, um, we just to remind you, we discovered that the delta function is an even function. The unit step function is neither even nor odd. And so we decomposed it into an even component, this guy here, and an odd component, this guy here. Okay, so let's look at our next signal. If you graph this signal, it looks like this. Uh, for a value of n of minus 1, it has a value of 1, then a value of 2 at 0, 3, 2, 1, and so on, and zeros for any value of n less than minus 1 or greater than 3. And so the first question we have to ask ourselves is, is this an even function? And if it's going to be an even function, then I should be able, then I'd be able to say x of n is equal to x of minus n. So for the case where n is equal to 1, for this guy here, x of n is 3, but x of minus n is 1. So this is not even. Okay, uh, for the ca to determine whether or not it's odd, uh, we have x of 0, which is 2, is not equal to minus x of minus 0, which is negative 2. Hopefully, at this point, you've realized that if a signal is odd, it's, zero x, it's x sub 0 term, or x of 0 term, will be 0. That has to be true for any odd signal. We can also see that x of 1, which is 3, is not negative 3, or, I, or I'm sorry, x of 1, which is 3, is not equal to x of or negative x of negative 1. If that were to be equal, x of negative 1 would have to be negative 3. So this is a signal that's not odd either. And so what we'd like to do is find its even and odd uh, components. So to find its even component, we basically take the signal and we flip it about the sample n is equal to 0. So the zeroth sample remains. Okay, the sample at 1 becomes a sample at minus 1. The sample at 2 becomes a sample at minus 2. The sample at 3 becomes a sample at minus 3. The sample at minus 1 becomes a sample at 1. And so you can see, and everything else is 0. So you can see that, again, what I've done is I've taken this guy, moved it here, this guy moved it here, um, this guy moved it here, this guy moved it here, this guy moved it here, and so on. And now to get the even um, part of this signal, I want to add these guys up and uh, divide by 2, multiply them by a half. So for the even part, at negative 3, I have 1 plus 0, and then multiplied by a half, so I'm going to have 1 half. At negative 2, I have 2 plus 0 divided by 2, so I've got a value of 1 here. At negative 1, I've got 3 plus 1, which is 4, divided by 2, which is 2. At 0, I've got 2 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 2. And now, since we're coming up with the even, the even part of x, you should be able to just write down what we have left, because it's symmetric about this sample. So out here, we're going to have a 2. You can actually look at these two terms to verify that that's true. Out here, we're going to have a 1. And out here, we're going to have a 1 half. And everything else is going to be 0. 
Okay, so you can look at this, and it is indeed even. It's uh, if I take it and flip it about uh, the zeroth sample, so I interchange the one negative one to negative two, and so on. It looks exactly the same. Okay, so this is our x of even, or our even component of x. Okay, well. Um, I'm going to erase this. Fortunately, this is video, so if you want to see it, just back up and pause. And uh, let's find now the odd component of x. Okay. Well, if we start here at negative 3, uh, we would have x of negative 3, which is 0, minus x of 3, which is 1. I've drawn here. So we'll have 0 minus 1, and that's multiplied by 1 half. So we'll have negative 1 half. This is at negative 3. At negative 2, we'll have 0 minus 2 times 1 half. So this guy goes to negative 1. Here we'll have 1 minus 3 times 1 half, which is again negative 1. Here we'll have 2 minus 2, which is good because um, the odd, or the, nth, the zero uh, value for an odd signal should be zero. Here we'll have 3 minus 1 times 1 half, so we'll have this. Here at 2, we'll have 2 minus 0 times 1 half. At 3, we'll have 1 minus 0 times 1 half, and everything else is 0. So you can see that um, I get the odd signal by taking the guy, uh, the guy, the value at 1, uh, changing the sign, and moving it to minus 1, and vice versa. I take the sample at 2, um, change its sign, and move it to minus 2. Okay, so here we have then the odd component of x of n. Okay, so we've discovered again that this guy is neither even nor odd, so we've broken it into its even and its odd components. So let's see what we've got left to do. We've achieved this one. Let's look at xn as cosine 6 pi or pi over 6 times n. Okay, so we have xn is cosine pi over 6n. Okay, when n is 0, this is going to have a value of 1. When n is 1, this is going to have a value of cosine pi over 6, which, if I remember correctly, is about 0.87 something. When n is negative 1, it'll be cosine of minus pi over 6, which again has this value. And I won't uh, continue to actually go through this carefully, but as I graph this, actually at uh, n is equal to 3, this should be 0. So I'll graph it badly. But the idea is, uh, hopefully, you can imagine that this guy is going to look like this. And as you can see, this is symmetric about um, x0. So this term and this term are the same. This term and this term are the same. This term and this term are the same. And that's because cosine itself is an even function. And so when I sample a cosine like this, I get an even function. Okay. Um, the next one that we were or that we're going to do is x n is equal to sine of pi over six n. And if I start graphing this guy, for n equals zero, the sine of zero is zero. For n equals 1, it's the sine of pi over 6, which, I'm sorry, this is 0. This is 1. And again, without going through it in detail, 
um, and graphing it again very badly, you get something that looks like this. And hopefully you can see, in spite of the fact that I've done a very bad job of graphing, uh, at when n is equal to 1, uh, that is the same magnitude but, a diff but the opposite sign as when n is equal to negative 1. So that means that this function is odd. And it's a consequence of the fact that the sine function is odd. Okay. So we'll check these guys off. Okay, now I have a situation. What happens when I have an odd function times an even function? Well, um, well let's check this out. And I'm not going to actually graph this guy. We're going to just work it out mathematically. Using the fact that we've already discovered that sine and cosine are odd and even respectively, so if I have x of n is equal to sine of n cosine of n, okay, and I want to see what x of negative n is. This is another way of checking to see if a function's even or odd. I just take n here and replace it by negative n. Well, this is going to be sine of negative n cosine of negative n. Now we just determined that cosine is an even function, so this is going to be cosine of n. Sine is an odd function, so this will be minus sine of n. Okay, so I have x of negative n is equal to negative sine of n cosine of n. But this guy here is our original x of n. So I have x of negative n is equal to x of n. That means that this guy is odd. And it turns out that that's true in general. The product of an even and an odd function is odd. Okay. Well, let's see. We'll do the last of these very, very quickly because I'm already out of time. So let's do the sine of n squared. Um, it turns out that this one is fairly easy to do if you say, well, x of n is the sine of n, that whole thing squared, and you can use a trig identity to write this as one-half minus one-half cosine 2n. Okay, so let's see what happens if I have x of minus n, this will be one-half minus one-half cosine of two times minus n. But I just showed, or we haven't showed, but we talked about the idea that cosine is even, so this is the same as cosine of 2n. So one-half minus one-half cosine of 2n is the same as what we have up here, so I have that x of minus n is equal to x of n. Okay, so this is even. But sine is an odd function. I'm multiplying it by itself, so I have the product of two odd functions, and I've shown that the product of two odd functions is even. It also turns out that the product of two even functions is even. Okay, well, um, I'm out of time. Hopefully, this has been a useful introduction to the idea of odd and even signals. Thanks for watching.